you see at the time as well we didn't see anybody that looked like us mm. in the band right you know never mind on telly not even in the magazines and and so like i say the news you got was like bernard and and terry r and then these lot turned up on the oxford road show which even though they were scousers it was it was a great tune on the arts and mind. But it's yeah. working class culture from both the cities. That's what it was, wasn't it? And that goes it, back to the 60s yeah. and 50s and everything and, and on, you know. And what we were trying to address it was just, as Sean was saying, it was what people were on the streets. It wasn't contrived or not, it was just what people Did were. Did anyone ever try and tell you to wear different stuff? A manager or... Look, I, I can, right, imagine Top of the Pops at the time and you've got uh, Howard, Howard Jones and you've got uh, Boy George, fantastic, and you've got, you know, Spandu and a big uh, thingy, what they call modern Durant, romances, Durant. and all this like right. So then we get someone comes to Salford from London to see us, and they say, and, and their thing that kept we're there with the with the side ears and the cagoules on and the trainers, and, and you never saw anything like that on, on, in any band, as like I said. And and the guy from London said, yeah, you know, there's something there in music, but you've got no image. We got that all the time. No You've image. got no image, and it's like, well, wait a minute. There's nobody on telly that looks like us. There's nobody in the magazines that look like us. Till James turned up with the front cover. That's what we got all the time. No image, no image. Yeah. But I had a meeting with Bill Drummond. Bill Drummond sussed out. I had a meeting in the mid '80s, just after the Oxford Road Show, with Bill Drummond. Bill Drummond said, "Look, I'll be your manager, but I want you to wear track suits." And go on stage with hard dogs. <laughs> That's what he said. And I, I said, who do you think I am? And we had a meeting in a pub on Lime Street. And he said, look, if, if you do what I did say for the next year, you know, you'll be all over the top of the pops, whatever. And that. So and basically, said, Frankie must have listened to that. <laughs> well, yeah. well, maybe, yeah, maybe. Because it was around about the same time. But I just said, Bill, no chance. Absolutely no chance. Where are you getting your clothes from in Manchester? Tweed jackets, we got them from all the old people's shops. Yes, yeah, that's where really you know, Very well made, you know, good, good gear. Fashion you know, similarities yeah. in Liverpool and Manchester fashion at that time because it was a, it was a reaction. And it was so much rivalry, you know, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't think even kids can get this today, right? But if I went to Liverpool in 1975 and, and 1981, me and three other pals, we'd have had our <laughs> cut off. Can I say <laughs> cut off? What about that? <laughs> and is cut off, right? You know, wandering around the train station and going to that Las Vegas fruit machine place, we'd have been literally killed and, and vice versa. What did you did? think what when you saw them? I just thought, oh, this is what we've been telling. No, 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 that's not too sure. This is, you know, that was all stuff for the enemy. You yeah, know? Yeah, but yeah. at the time, we just thought, you know, we've been telling people for years, this is the greatest image anyone could ever have. It's the greatest image. Record companies, publishers, they couldn't see it. Do you know what the funny thing was about that as well? What, what the media are back to at the time, right? We was, the, the casual, whatever you want to call it now, Scottish, Paris, we was, uh, but we, we was what was happening, but what the media then did, because he didn't get it, was go, let's bring back mod. Yeah. So 1979, everyone's walking around with a pork pie hat, Fred Perry's on, and this and that, and recreated something that, we was doing something new. Yeah, yeah. That was a that and was then, about Quadrophenia, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, but we were saying, a lot of a few I lads who went the match started becoming a bit more modish, but but generally It was for people who that didn't get onto the casual culture yeah, as yeah, well, yeah, that only yeah. got their influence mm. from some mm. magazine. Definitely, yeah, definitely. And the greatest look for me was the, the Al Peter Stone Cagoo. Yeah, yeah. Pair, yeah. pair of jeans yeah. and a pair of Stan Smith. Well, yeah. that, you, can, you know, can't well, get better than that. Were you wearing any girls then? Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, yes, Stan Smith was my first. I mean, I'm talking, I, my first pair of trainers was in the 60s when I didn't even know what trainers was, but dad got me. Uh, in fact, you know, it wasn't really until the 90s when all those sort of trainers that, mm -hmm. you know, that started coming to the shops. It was also. revolutionary stuff, it was because it was, you were trying to get stuff that no one else had. And it's hard to explain now because every, every city centre looks the same, doesn't it? I thought you told me that those service crew lads and leads told you about the Mondays. Yeah, they did, yeah. The Leeds lads good. got in touch with me and said, oh, I've just seen a band in, the, in Leeds there. For, like, the, the Mondays, they're fantastic. They remind me of the fun, you know, in terms of the way they look. Well, you were on telly before, yeah. so you were... So we looked so that's how the, the Leeds, Leeds, That's how the Leeds lot knew about us from the telly. Yeah. So I always remember the night, I don't know if it was 89, I think it was 89, but the Mondays and the Roses were on the same top of the pops. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I just right, thought... Yeah. That's brilliant. 
I thought that's fantastic because we've been telling all these record companies and they and our people and managers that this is the greatest luck you could ever have, and they'd all been telling us you've got no image. Yeah. So to me, it was like a reinforcement of what we've been saying was working class culture. And I really did try to say to Ian Brown, look, mate, none of these like know who we are. They haven't got a clue. So you come on and play drums. I'll go on in your band and play guitar, <laughs> and we can properly take the piss out of this. <laughs> and, and, and that first time the Fox was also told, I will never work that show again. You've never been on it since? Of course I have. I presented yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs>